My bad, but I cannot wait for you guys to all meet my wonderful guest tonight. I have Jennifer Farrell from HGTV, as well as Talia Matic, who has a new show getting ready to premiere probably next week, actually. She'll share more soon. I cannot wait for you guys to meet them. We're all about High Point Furniture Market virtual party this week. And let's go ahead and get the party started, right? All right, so here we go. First is Jennifer. And we'll bring in Talia. Yay. Hello, Camille. Hi, hello. Hi, ladies. And you look beautiful and healthy, and those are two wonderful things right now in the world. Okay. <laughs> yeah. For as long as possible, right? Stay, Stay that with way. You guys, you guys are doing great under the circumstances of not being able to go to our, we were talking a little bit off air, not being able to go to our hair salons and so on, like doing the best. Uh, you can. Yeah, that's actually the fun challenge is... Uh, how does one not turn into a wild, <laughs> savage wildebeest during the coronavirus yes. quarantine? Yeah. Um, I have realized that today was the first day that I have worn earrings. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I have not put on earrings in six weeks. And so I was like, I think I'm going to have to shove these things and <laughs> re <-pierce> my ears. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Starting all so, over. Yeah. Yeah. So we're starting over. Yeah, well, you're doing, you look amazing. And how about with you, Talia? How's everything going on your side? Same. It's just adjusting to life. New normals, right? Like yeah. no hair, you know, no nails, getting your hair done. But it's been really nice. I think I've gone weeks without makeup. So my skin feels so healthy and glowing when I, when I do put on makeup. It really like, I'm like, oh, this looks good. This feels good. <laughs> my, husband, oh, wow. my husband said the other day, Oh, honey, you look really beautiful. I like that pink lipstick. And he's normally a guy that likes completely like nude face, no makeup. So I think he's getting, he was getting, he's like, all right, it's nice to see a little makeup on you. <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, I remember what makeup looks like. Now yeah. I can tell the difference. <laughs> oh, yeah, that stuff. <laughs> it feels good to get dressed up a little bit. Yeah. Now, is there any projects that you guys are working on at home? Have you done any, like, since you're both designers, have you rearranged your furniture any or doing any virtual design? I'll let Talia go. I am. Um, I only have sound for Camille, so I can't mm. hear Talia. Um, I don't but know. Go first. Okay. Um, I, I have been doing a, a couple in virtual design projects. Um, just, <clears throat> excuse me, clients reaching out, going stir crazy, wanting to do stuff in their house and paint right now. Everybody seems to want to paint. So um, that's been fun helping them pick out paint colors virtually. But for myself, I really haven't. I've been spending a lot of time in my backyard. So <laughs> planting and just being in nature and then baking, which is something I don't normally do. And it's been getting me in trouble. But yeah, baking um, gluten-free, dairy-free chocolate chip cookies. So <laughs> it sounds like torture, but I believe it probably does taste good <laughs> since you're used to it. <laughs> yes. Oh my yeah. god, that sounds very healthy. It's delicious though. It doesn't taste healthy. Oh good. Okay. Oh look, and your daughter's in here, even Kenley. I just saw her pop up because I was making sure that everybody oh, could hear good. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. All right. So Jennifer, uh, with you, how's everything how's everything going with you as far as design product? I mean projects. Are you working on any or well, you know, I'm still working very, very remotely. And I do mean re remotely. I'm uh, at hold up at my house, Wolf Peak, and it is sort of an enclave, which, you know, is its own kind of gift anyway, because, you know, it has lots of land and a beautiful view, and I'm still in the Los Angeles area, but we're up in the Malibu Hills, so it's very uh, removed anyway. So right now, Beautiful if you're going to hole up, like this is actually a great place to do it, and there's enough room to you know, run around outside and get some fresh air without actually having to leave the property. Um, so I am working a lot for my home office, which a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. And so I am working on projects remotely, but it's always really challenging. You know, I'm trying to 
you know, when I'm asking a client, okay, send me a photo of the carpet. And so I can see how the sheen is, is coming in the light. And of course, you know, they take these pictures that I can't tell what I'm looking at. And so it's challenging to do our jobs and not mm-hmm. go into somebody's house. That's not yeah. very easy. Uh, but I'm doing stuff, you know, uh, still in the TV world, sort of, because I'm working with Lambs Plus. We're going to be doing a webinar mm-hmm. in May. So we'll do some fun stuff online. Uh, but my TV shows are all in reruns right now. So <laughs> if you want to see me over and over and over and over and over again. Why wouldn't anybody? I mean, then, you're amazing. Well, yeah. then feel free to tune into FYI or to AWE because both networks are just running Find Me a Vacation Home and Behind the Gates and oh, Holiday it. Dream Home. I'm getting fan mail from like Portugal and oh, wow. all these fascinating places where they're playing like 10 episodes a day. So oh, fun. yes, I am now, will be permanently attached to the coronavirus in Portugal. <laughs> and Spain, so. Well, but at the same time, since you did that show, I have to ask, like, after all of this is done, is there a particular place you're looking forward to going? Speaking of vacation homes. I love that you just asked that because my husband asked me that yesterday. Oh, okay. And I, you know, we had a trip planned to the UK that was supposed to start in about a week from now. Mm -hmm. And we were actually going to be taking our moms. And um, I've been, and my mom's been, but his mom had never, yes, his mom had never been. So we booked the tickets to the UK. And I actually used to live in Northern England for a brief time and absolutely loved it. So yeah. honestly, I'd love to go there. I, I'd love to go back. It's so beautiful. I love the people. Um, we are going to do probably Hawaii or something tropical and exotic mm-hmm. first where we can just yeah. sit on the beach. Even though I'm, you know, we live here in two seconds from the Malibu <laughs> coast. You can't go there right now because everything's closed. So I would say UK is definitely still on our list uh, and probably something tropical and exotic where we can just – be vegetables, kind of like what we're doing now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in a different climate. I get that. Yeah. How about for you, Talia? What is your first goal for? We've been talking about the same thing, tropical. Yeah. We're going to go to the beach as soon as we can. We've never been to Hawaii, so that's the top oh, of our sure. list. Yeah. And then we always go to see my dad who has a house on the lake in Illinois in the middle of nowhere with, it's just quiet and nature and we hang out and barbecue and relax. And so that's a must. We're, we're going to do that as soon as we can. So. You're going to love Hawaii. That's probably my favorite place that I've gone vacation really? wise. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, give me some tips. The people and everything. The food was a little different. I mean, because it was a lot like Southern food, and I'm not the biggest fan of Southern food. So yeah. I was like, I could add this at all. <laughs> but other than that, it was beautiful. And the people there were just so friendly and nice. You just, I've never been anywhere like it as far as just being, I don't know if you had the same experience there, Jennifer, but where everybody's just super friendly in Hawaii to a point. I just can't say enough good things about them, but All right. one of my favorite things in Hawaii was uh-huh. eating, uh, going to the, like the Dole pineapple plantation. I know that oh, sounds yeah. totally, totally tourist, but it was, it was fantastic yeah. because you're eating That's the freshest so pineapple awesome. you've ever had. And you get that Dole whip, which is like mm. the stuff you can get at Disneyland, mm. which is one of my favorite things yeah. in the world. Well, that sounds delicious. That does sound delicious. Now, I have to ask as well, speaking of coronavirus type things, have you guys noticed any house or any celebrity that you've seen that you're like, I want to redo their home? Or just from watching them on the news, you're just, why won't they move that a little bit more to the left or right? Do you find yourself like trying, like thinking of projects that you would love to do or have a celebrity you would love to do? What about you, Talia? I don't know about celebrities that I would like to redo, but I think we talked about this a little bit before. Everybody's doing the similar setup right now. And so I stare at their background first and certain things will annoy me or I'm like, oh, if they would just do this, it would look so much better. Um, <clears throat> but Nate and Jeremiah have been posting a lot of uh, pictures of their new home in New York. And I just love their design aesthetic. So not that I want to redo it, but it's just been really cool to tour different homes of celebrities, you know, that you can see. Yeah, it's really cool. I would agree with that. How about with you, Jennifer? Any house that you've seen or? Well, you know, we got to see a lot of Chris Cuomo's basement. Oh, my God. Yeah. I 
think I have his stairs memorized at this point. Right? Um, I hope he is never again confined to his basement. Right. Four <laughs> weeks on end. Right there. But right. I would love to help him spruce up that basement a little bit and actually make a home studio because it's yeah. probably not the last time that he's going to be working from home. I mean, yeah. this is there. You know, we've heard it a million times. There's no magic light switch going on and off. Right. So people need to be prepared that the weird behaviors we're having to do right now, mm-hmm. we may have to do them again mm-hmm. and we may have to do them again a few times and hopefully each time we'll get better at it. But working from home is going to be a thing. Mm-hmm. And even if you're a broadcaster, you're going to end up doing things from home, just like all three of us are doing right now. Right. And so I would love to help Chris spruce up the basement and make himself a lovely home studio down there where he doesn't look like the bad kid who got sent down the stairs to go sit in the corner. <laughs> yeah, he definitely looks like he's in timeout in his own house. I'm like, oh, totally. but, yeah. That's an excellent answer. That's a good one. I, speaking of that, so so many people are stuck home now working from home and doing Zoom meetings. What suggestions would you say, we'll start with you, Jennifer, as far as to do, like definitely things you should do as far as setting up your home studio, so to speak, and things you should just absolutely avoid? Well, here's something that has nothing to do with design, but it does have to do with personal feel. Uh, Get ready for your meeting the same way you would if you were actually going to it. You know, we're all about a month into this, some of us more, some of us less, and A lot of us are already falling off the rails because we've gotten so used to being in our pajamas 24 hours a day Mm -hmm. and, oh, maybe I washed my hair this week. So (laughs) pretend you're actually going to the meeting. It will make you feel a little more normal. It will help you, you know, like, oh, I smell good and I feel Mm -hmm. good and I'm dressed in actual clothes and you can go back to your pajamas right after the meeting, but it does help you have a sense of normalcy because you're putting you're you're in your own uh, normal business mode, and that mm-hmm. does help a lot. Um, as far as your home office, I've actually been doing a lot talking about that, and I've done some posts and a couple things with Lambs Plus. You know, I'm a Lambs Plus mm-hmm. brand ambassador, and so we've been doing some fun stuff. And in this webinar that we're doing in May, I'll be talking about ways to spruce up your your home workspace, even to create a temporary workspace. Um, light is really important. So if you so are now stuck in your kitchen working or you're you know, working from the living room couch, make sure you're even bringing in some extra lighting, open the windows, get the curtains open, bring in extra table and floor lamps, get light in the space because it's really difficult for your eyes and your brain to stay focused. If mm-hmm. the lighting isn't good. No, I would totally agree with that. And I, I'm just going to put this out there. If you could make a diagram to give people examples, because I've been looking on the internet to try to find examples I could send to people with it just so they don't have all the light behind them. Or maybe they just have like a a Rembrandt type lighting on themselves. So like there's all this shadow and just a little bit lit. I would love to have something that kind of breaks it down. So I'm definitely, please let me know in that webinar because I will share it. Yeah, so I, I think we're going, uh, I think it's May 7th. Uh, oh, great, so early. This webinar. Yeah, and so it's coming up soon. And in that, I'm going to be talking about the three kinds of lighting okay. where there's like general lighting, which would be your ceiling cans or your overhead lighting that casts like a wide spread. Turn that on. Then get your task lighting, which can be a table lamp or an accent lamp, an office lamp, something that's shining light directly onto your work area. Put that on the opposite hand from the hand that you write with so that your shadow isn't casting across what you're working on if you're writing. Um, And same with typing, try to shine it so that it's actually showing you the keys instead of blocking. And then the third light is accent light, which is um, could be a floor lamp or some kind of decorative lighting that gives a, just a pretty ambient glow and gives you something pretty to look at and also kind of moves your eye around the space. So those three layers of light can actually help your workspace a lot. I am so impressed with your with you telling me that because I have, I'll just show it because why not? And we're live. I have this little lamp that I use and it's, you're right. It's on the left side because I'm right-handed and I never even knew that there was a science behind it as far as like that being 
the shadows and all of that. So who knew? You're doing it right, Camille. Yeah, thank. I got Jennifer's approval. <laughs> <laughs> How about for you, Talia? What would you say is your that you sticks out to you as far as for people re working remotely, things they should or shouldn't do? The things that Jennifer mentioned a lot of great, great tips, but for me, I have to have my house picked up the night before. So when I wake up, I have a clean aesthetic. So mental, just being spiritually and mentally in a place where I've set myself up for success. So for me, it's lighting my candles in the morning. I have to turn on the lamps. I have to make sure there's bright sunshine coming in my house. Um, and then like she said, getting dressed for the day. So um, I've been exercising in the morning and then I come home and get dressed and change. So even if I'm sitting at my kitchen island working, um, I feel I feel like I'm in the mode and the mindset that this is what I need to be doing right now. If I don't and I have days where I stay in my pajamas or my yoga pants, I have a less productive day for sure. Yeah. Now, is there anything that you've noticed with people um, when they're doing the Zooms or even the reporters, like anything you would suggest for their design as far as setting what? up the aesthetic that way as well? People being aware of what's behind Actually, them. I'll let Talia take this one because we were talking about this before we started. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's behind them is is in the shot a lot. Like I did a Zoom meeting the other day with them. Um, um, it was three or four of us and there was cough syrup in the background and they don't realize what's in the shot. So even getting set up, like I came on early, not knowing you guys were going to be on, getting yourself into the camera setting to test it so you can see exactly what's in the shot, what needs to be adjusted. Um, and then just be relaxed, you know, don't don't overthink it and overstage it because sometimes that's very apparent as well. Um, this is me. I like, you know, nature and whatnot. This is what you're going to see in my home. Jennifer's aesthetic in the background, I think, represents her beautifully as well. So and yours, too. So I'm. I'm I'm a daughter of an artist, so I have to always have her artwork yeah, behind me. Because <laughs> yesterday, Danny was saying you should have your desk facing out the window, and I can't because then it would show my closet doors, my French closet door. Like it would be completely boring behind me, no right. artwork. So I was like, everywhere else, that's probably true. Right. <laughs> as far as that, you want that daylight, but I have to show the beautiful art. And that well, yeah, in the Zoom, the Zoom conference or in your home broadcast, like everyone right now is having to do something where they're looking at a monitor or a phone and talking to people. Um, if you want that to look good, the best way to do it is that you physically are looking at the brightest light that you can. Um, so you want what's behind you to be less lit than what's in front of you because your your camera is going to pick up the whatever's getting the most light on it. Yeah. And so like right now, if you know, I'm, I'm pretty decently lit mm -hmm. right now. That's because I am staring out at the brightest window wall. And so even though I've got windows all the way around, I'm looking at the one where the sun is coming right now. Uh, if we were shooting this in the morning, I would turn my whole set around and I'd be facing that way. I yeah. also have other lights as well, which I'm not using right now. But when I'm doing other broadcasts, you know, we set up, uh, you know, light stands and stuff. Right. But to give yourself enough light on your face and you want it not to come from the side, you want it to come directly on. Side lighting, bad. Front lighting, good. Right. Okay. Um, and I do that all the time when we're shooting. And anytime our wonderful camera operators say, can you look over here? I'm like, mm -mm, sorry, no, I got to look at the light because that's how you're going to both be seen the best and you're going to look the best. That even right. light hitting your face is the best. And then when you have stuff in the background, you can see right now, I just have a few beautiful things, some lovely items from Lamps Plus, um, mm -hmm. as well as a plant and just a, a piece of art in the back. The piece of art, by the way, was painted by my stepdaughter. She's I'm amazing. trying to find a way where um, I could show a full of your, there we go. Oops, so they can see what you're talking about. No, you're still, I'm still here. Can you hear me? I don't oh. know if you still have me or not. There sorry, she is. I can hear, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have, I didn't realize it when I, I was trying to, so they could see the whole aesthetic. I could hear and see ah. you, but I had moved it so they could see the whole room. And now I know not to do that. <laughs> but there I am again. Uh, yeah. So anyway, the stuff behind me, um, I put there actually to block some of the light that's behind me. So um. that even though there is a window behind me, I've got some things behind me that are uh, blocking some of that light out so that I become the brightest thing in the camera shot. So it's picking up on me the best. And so those are just sort of some tips for when you're doing these. It's not just to make you look good. It's also so people can really see you because it's very hard sometimes as we're all doing these Zoom conferences 
for people to see your expression, uh, mm-hmm. to even know like if you're a- able to focus on them or you're agreeing with them. So, you know, that, that lighting and the background are actually kind of important. I would totally agree with that. Uh, I think Talia, you already answered that because you kind of tailed it. Now I'm trying to remember the order, but we're back to you, Jennifer. Um, since you touched on it already a little bit and you worked so many jobs as a host, what other advice would you give as far as like owning the camera and just owning your space just for people who, well, I mean, I worked as an actress, so I'm kind of used to working on camera, but for those that are now like scared of the camera lens in front of them and now like the same people they would be talking to in a meeting, maybe not have any problem, but because now they're behind a camera, there's new anxieties that are popping up. Any suggestions you have from your years of working? Well, you know, doing things the way we're doing them at this particular moment where we're all safer at home and we're doing it into a small screen, um, there's, there's this interesting instinct, which is natural for me to look at the screen while I'm talking to you, because right now, as I'm looking at the screen, I'm able to see pretty Camille, but I, as a host, I actually am looking over here at the little Mm. phone where the camera is because even though I want to look at you and you're beautiful and fun, I want you to be able to see my eyes. And so, sorry, Mm. I don't get to look at you except out of the corner of my eye because I had no idea. Yeah. Because I'm looking right at that camera and that way when people are listening to me, um, hopefully they feel like they're a little more connected with what I'm saying. And so even though I'm taking a hit, a bit because I'm not getting to look at you directly. I can still see you in the corner of my eye, but because I'm looking right at that camera, okay. it makes you, whether it's you know something that's entertaining or it's a business meeting, it's making the people who are listening to me feel like I'm really in tune with them. Very great tip. I'm going to use that myself for the rest of this broadcast. Oh, although she I have just to also did. Look at <laughs> she comments. just did it. Yes. So, although I'm also supposed to look at comments, so I will be cheating every once in a while, but I definitely want to make sure people feel connected. And the way I was looking at my screen was I was looking eye contact with where you guys were on my screen, right. which probably wasn't giving the best visual. And it hasn't even dawned on me because when well, I'm looking it's... back at the playbacks, I'm looking for mistakes with like edit with mm-hmm. audio and other things. I'm not looking at where my eyes are looking. Yeah. It's, I so, mean, it's natural it's instincts. Now. Like I want to look at Talia. I want to look at Camille, but mm-hmm. if I, as the speaker am trying to make sure that you're as engaged with me as possible, eye contact is the best way to do that. And that's again, where lighting my face with as much direct light on the front of my face as possible yeah. helps you see my eyes. See, that's hard. I still want to look at you guys. Cause especially when you start showing me on your face, what you're doing. Yeah. I, I'll I'll start next week. <laughs> <laughs> you have to bounce around because yeah. you're doing sixteen yeah. things at once right now. So True, you still but... have to be able to look over here and look yeah. over here and, and run and like everything. Years of practice of trying to make eye contact, but even with film, they always tell you to cheat a little bit over the like a little bit side to their nose so you're still open to the camera. But mm-hmm. I yeah. <clears throat> this is my first time hosting by myself on TV. I don't have and you're brilliant at it. You're doing great. Why thank That's you. Cool. Another so, Jennifer check. <laughs> I might put this on my resume. Hi, <laughs> Jennifer, for hosting. <laughs> Just kidding. So, how about with you, Talia? Because you've also you've done a lot of camera appearances as well. And, and any advice you could give for people who are somewhat new to now having to do meetings and so on from Zoom? Yeah, I feel like I'm still learning too. Like I'll I'll watch playbacks and go, you know what, that doesn't look so great. So I'm going to defer to Jennifer's expertise. I've always, I mean, since the second I started watching her, you know, on the previous network, I was like, wow, she's perfect. And you can tell that this is your craft and that she does this for a living. So, um, you know, I'm I'm still learning. The low and the high end of things, because I had I'm still like flabbergasted about that bed that was like $100,000 or something. Like it had, it would have previous mattresses built into it. So you could have like your family mattress built. I don't remember exactly all the details, but I remember being like, wow, I didn't even know this existed and how sweet and creepy at the same time. That is (laughs) just kidding. That's so neat. Okay. That's a very good point that you guys both have brought up about with cameras and definitely Jennifer, your expertise is greatly appreciated yeah. on that. So thinking forward to whenever high point market happens again, which hopefully is in October, but whenever it happens, what are the things that you most get from going? Like, what are you there? What's your goal when you go there 
to high point market when you're not just, I mean, obviously you're, a lot of times you guys are on panels, but when you're not, what's the fun parts that you always look forward to? Well, and for anyone who doesn't know what High Point Market is, um, it's sort of the biggest gathering of designers and industry insiders coming together to see what's new in design. And, uh, you know, we had, let's see, um, the last time I was there, I was on a panel, um, but we had, I don't even know how many tens of thousands of people come to that to attend twice a year. And it's usually in April and then in the fall. And unfortunately right now it's not happening. But um, I would say that besides being on, I was on a panel with Zuo Mod, which was always so much fun and some great, great industry insiders and friends who were on the panel. And it was moderated by Christopher Grubb, who just is like the best moderator in the world. Um, (laughs) But besides getting to see a lot of my design friends, which weirdly enough, we only see each other at, events. Like it's, everyone's super busy. So, you know, Christopher lives within moments of me and yet I never get to see him. Although I did run into Barry Livingstone at the grocery store yesterday. That <laughs> well, was kind of funny. That's hilarious. Uh, yes. You so your mask I on? see Barry at, you know, <laughs> we had an event at Wolf Peak where we did a big showcase here. Uh, that's the last time I saw Barry and Christopher. And then I saw him at the grocery store. But, um, <laughs> You know, I think that going to High Point, not only is it great to get to see all of the exciting design that's coming out, um, all the new products that are there, but really getting to see friends that were all too busy and too globetrotting to get together otherwise. And so, you know, High Point's great because twice a year I get to see them all. Um, I also have to say High Point has fabulous parties for uh, for the, the insiders in design. So we do have some really mm-hmm. fun parties there every year. And I always love to go, by the way, Theodore Alexander, I'd love to go see their showroom and see what's going on because not only are they nice mm-hmm. enough to host some really lovely events, um, and they did host an HGTV reunion there one time, uh, okay. which I went to, but uh, they just always have the most beautiful showroom and we get to do lots of fun things there. So. I I mean, you really never know who you'll see at High Point Market. I think Kenny G was performing in one of the showrooms last year, or not even last year. Oh, yeah, it was last year, October. (laughs) So, but for Talia, what about you? What did you look forward the most about going to High Point Market? Well, last year, surprisingly, was my first time going to High Point Market. So it was a wonderland, and it was sensory overload for me, but it was really, really neat, like Jennifer said, to stand there and talk to people that we've connect, formed connections with on this um, online community of designers to meet them in person. Um, the panels, to see the showrooms. I loved the Aiden Gray home uh, showroom, Toma Clark, who I've been following for a long time. The Antiques Diva had a new line that launched there. So to sit and have brunch with them and these designers and just pick each other's brains and be inspired. Um, it's really, I can see why it was so important to invest in the time and the money to go. Um, so much inspiration. And you decide really quickly what what you really are drawn to and love and, and sometimes you realize, okay, that I can appreciate that aesthetic, but it's not mine. So it's really just, I don't want to call it sensory overload, but it is stimula- it's just stimulating and inspiring and, um, and the connections with people standing in the same room with like designers that you look up to and having a conversation with them. It was a huge learning process for me, and I will definitely be going back every year. Oh, well, can't wait, of course, I, since I live in North Carolina. I know. High Point Market is the only furniture market I've been to. So is there different themes, you would say, for the other markets, like, whether Dallas or um, Vegas? Because have you been to either of those? Well, you know, I I am, first of all, allow me to say that I would love to go to all of them all the time. Um, it's a little challenging just because of my shooting schedule. And then I run a design firm as well. And so... Mm-hmm a lot of times they there's not enough time to do all these. And I do a lot with the International Surface event, which goes on at the same time as Vegas Market. And so even for me, it's hard to get to Vegas Market because I'm, you know, I'm doing stuff at the International Surface event. Uh, and so I would say that there, each one is a little bit different, mm-hmm. um, but High Point is really the largest one. Dallas is great. I know the folks who run that show and it's a really good one. Um, Vegas is great. Uh, But I would encourage if people are looking at really going to these different trade events, I would say pick 
one of those three main furniture markets and then um, try something else like the International Surface Event or um, uh, uh, Dwell on Design, you know, which isn't actually, I'm hesitating because they're sort of revamping right now. And so I'm not sure when the next one's going to be. But some of them are much more design uh, materials oriented instead of furniture, mm-hmm. which markets are, are typically lots and lots of furniture and soft surfaces. Whereas there's the international surface event is like flooring and carpet. Um, the, you know, K-Biz is for kitchen and baths. Like try mm-hmm. to venture out a little bit so that you are seeing all the things that go into an interior space because soft materials and furnishings are just part of that. Like when you're looking at a home, you know, you walk into a room and you're seeing the floor, the ceiling, the lighting, the tile on the walls, uh, the furniture in the room. You know, there's a lot of different components that go in. So I would suggest just trying to venture out and do, you know, like West Edge or some of these other ones that are not just about furniture and soft furnishings. Okay. Now I heard there's another tip that you can share with us about your shoes. There's like a spray apparently. Oh, wait, wait, is this Italia? Is this Italia one? No, I think, oh wait, uh, Danny told me, I, I think he said you and not Donna, but there's like a spray that makes your feet not hurt as bad when you're wearing no, that, heels. That would not be me because okay. if Danny Russo is talking about me, he's talking about my newscaster hair. Yeah. <laughs> hundred percent. Danny Russo, who is a fabulous designer, by the way. I knew. Yeah. No, Danny is a fabulous designer. He is a fabulous friend of mine. Um, But I know if he's talking about anything about me, he's talking about my hair. Because he always says that I look like an 80s newscaster. (gasps) Hi, Danny. I would not say the 80s part, (laughs) but I would definitely say like you have the perfect like Yes. Fox News news hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> Have you guys watched the movie Bombshell? I think it was Bombshell. Yes. Yeah. I yes. Well, you know, okay, so here's a fun story that most of you don't know. This is uh, this is only on your show, Camille. Uh-uh. Um okay. So I was um real estate correspondent for Fox and Friends weekend. Right. And so I was flying back and forth to New York. I'm based in LA, but I was flying back and forth to New York and doing my segments there uh from their studio in New York. And so the last time I was there, uh, I was informed that I'd have to give up the green room because Donald Trump was coming in. Uh, He was running for president and the security was heightened. And so they said, okay, well, unfortunately, you're gonna have to give up the green room because we've got to clear the space because, you know, future candidate Trump is entering the building. So I gave up my space. And then the next week when I was getting ready to fly out, um, fly back to New York, you know, from LA. Uh, then I got a call saying, well, we're going to have to put that on indefinite hold because this bombshell had just dropped. And, uh, from Fox and friends was all sorts of interesting stuff happening. And that's when Gretchen Carlson dropped this bomb of a lawsuit with my attorney, by the way, which is kind of a weird coincidence. Um, so, I technically lost my job because they never called back to get me back out there after they put, uh, you know, the blonde anchors on hold for a little while. Uh-huh. And that's the last time I worked for Fox. Um, so technically, I think Gretchen Carlson owes me a finder's fee on that one. Right? <laughs> I would say she might have saved you from some of the drama there because I'm assuming <laughs> you didn't have any of those problems being a correspondent that some of the um, I didn't. I had, a le- I had a lovely time working with Fox and Friends weekend. Mm-hmm. They were actually fantastic. So I really enjoyed my time there. Yeah. like I was like, after watching that show, I don't, Talia, did you happen to see that movie? Oh. Yes. Okay, okay. I was like, after that, I was like noticing all news desks that had glass table <laughs> from that point. I was like, oh my god. Like I was just like disgusted almost. Like, oh my gosh, who knew that they were thinking like that that way? But oh see, it is Don it's Donna Moss with the shoe trick. Donna. She has the lidocaine. I, Ooh, that's I got good. the stories confused. Well, I told you well, Donna is very clever and Donna is always wearing very fancy shoes. So okay. I'm sure she had to figure out something good. <laughs> I'm a cute from the ankles up type of girl. But when I first met Danny, the first thing he asked me about was my outfit. I think his exact words was, what was, what was the motivation behind what you're wearing today? Like, what were you thinking when you left the house? I was like, 
At least he said it directly to your face. I love that. Yeah. That's why I kept him as a friend because yeah. he'll tell you the truth no matter if it the first day he meets you or 10 years later. Well, I guess we haven't been friends. We that love long, our Danny Russo. He's very Dan- straightforward. Danny F. Russo. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, one like, um, I wanted to make sure I'm courteous of your time because I did try to make it shorter because originally Talia did have another show that was going to be premiering afterwards, but it got pushed back. So I just want to make sure I get this one in. Yes. Um, so but let me find it again. Oh, I lost my place. Oh, what have you learned about yourself during quarantine? That's it. Oh, Talia, you take that one first. Mm. <laughs> um, I have learned that I have no control over anything and I am kind of a control freak. Um, even and my family points it out a lot. So it has been an exercise and letting go and just trusting that I really don't have a lot of control over, you know, what I think I do. So, um, I know that's kind of deep, but that's really what, what's come out of this, you know, for me. How about for you, Jennifer? You know, I've learned a couple interesting things. Um, I'm an only child and so am I, I. well, I learned that some of the weird things that we've learned in our lives that are skill sets we didn't know we had have come into play right now. Like as an only child, I spent a lot of time all by myself, mm-hmm. playing with my own Barbie mm-hmm. dolls, building Barbie houses, you know, doing yeah. a lot of stuff on my own. And I'm finding that only child uh, entertain yourself skill is hugely valuable right now. Yeah. And so things that I never thought I would be able to call back later are coming back now. Um, so I learned that about myself, that that was uh, something that I didn't know I had in me. What I'm also learning is I'm going to make an excellent retired person because <laughs> I have had so much fun, You know, even though I'm still doing work from home. Yeah, right. I have had so much fun gardening. I have, we've got a mm-hmm. massive vegetable garden here. And so we're growing just crops right now. Oh, wow. And so I'm out there playing in the garden and I put a 2000 piece puzzle together. I like took it carefully and slowly. Like I was, you know, having to cherish every single piece. Um, so it took <laughs> me like a this. month to put it together, but I'm realizing that I am very good at entertaining myself and spending time with myself. And if I could sort of pass that to uh, a helpful tip for other people, um, enjoy your own time with yourself because we don't actually get time like this. Mm -hmm. We're always doing, doing, doing. Like everybody's always going and running. And I don't know. And on a time schedule. Always on a time schedule and always super busy and always late for this. And I don't know anybody who doesn't have a million things to do, including retired people. Mm -hmm. So this time everyone's like, God, I can't wait to get out and I can't wait to go do this. And I can't wait to see people and hug people. Agreed. But take advantage of this. Enjoy time to get to read a book. Enjoy time. Even if you live in an apartment, just to go outside and stand on the sidewalk, even wearing a mask and look up at the sunshine Right. Enjoy a time to listen to a bird chirp for 20 minutes because you yes. don't get that kind of time just with yourself. Mm-hmm. And so instead of looking at it as a prison, look at it as an opportunity for a moment alone. And it's a long moment. I'll grant you that. Yeah. Yeah. But a moment alone to do quiet things that you never thought you'd get to do, to get to play solitaire, to put a puzzle mm-hmm. together. Uh, you know, to just sit outside and watch the wind in the trees. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, How about you, Will? Uh, I would say that I discovered I'm a huge extrovert. So, that, I mean, that's pretty much why I started this show because I was like, how am I going to not be able to talk to anybody mm-hmm. for days at a time? Because I'm pretty much a stay at home mom when I'm not filming or shooting jobs. And I would, just quit my radio station job because I got cast in a movie. So I was like, well, I have time now to read the script. Read it five times. And then I was like, well, now I got time to read the book. Yeah, I read that twice. <laughs> and so it's like, yeah. You know, it's like, and then after a while, I just realized I do love the family time of it all, though, because I thought I would never be able to homeschool. And now I have a lot more appreciation for it in the sense that instead of her coming home from school completely exhausted and hungry and not even able to remember all the 20,000 things that happened throughout the day, 
I'm right there with her. I can pop in and see what she's doing and be like, oh, that's what they're talking about. Or, you know, like it refreshes the memory in that sense. So it's, I get to be more engaged with her and we've been playing board games and different things, but my husband, he still works. So that's why I was like, I need adult interaction because otherwise I'll be talking in kids terms again when this is all over with like potty and may. Yeah. It was really bad when I was, when she was a toddler and I first started hanging out with adults again. So I didn't want to revisit that. <laughs> you know, can you go to the potty? Like nobody wants to hear that from a grown woman, especially when she's over 40. So yeah, <laughs> I, I've, yeah I've definitely learned that. And um, I thought I would be watching TV this entire time. And only time I really watch it is for like I've, to keep up with what everybody's talking about. Like I just started or just finished watching um, – Little fires everywhere. Oh, so oh. don't tell me if I watched. The, I missed the finale last. I don't night. know that one. Yeah, oh. you did. I didn't know until today. Somebody was going live with one of the. Um, she's nope. not a character, but she cur- um, curates for the music. I'm not telling anything. I promise. I would never be that friend. <laughs> but I was just like, wait, there's a finale. So then I went on Hulu. And was like, huh, there you are. Because I stayed up till maybe two a.m. watching that show from beginning until yeah. I was like, oh, I thought that was the finale. Yeah, when I watched because I was waiting until it was done. But so yeah. good, so so good. Such a good show. I know. Can you hear me, Jennifer? Can she hear me? Or um, no, I guess not. She's just reacting to my funniness, the faces, <laughs> to know when to laugh. I'm very impressed. Yeah. All right. Well, I can't thank you both enough for agreeing to be part of my High Point Market virtual party, and you guys have given such great tips, not only on how to conduct. Zoom meetings or whatever webinars they may be <laughs> attending, but also knowing that you have classes coming up that can teach them even more about lighting. And mm-hmm. I did kind of want to jump on a little, I'll sneak in one little quick question just because I know people will want to know what advice or what trends would you say that you do not want to see moving forward? That we do not want to see mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. in terms of design? Yes. Ooh, Talia, how about you? What I don't like to see, and it doesn't matter if it's a trend or not, is matchy-matchy. When people love the color pink and they want everything in their house to be pink or, um, you know, I really don't like telling people what they shouldn't like. If they like it and it's something they feel comfortable with, um, I'm fine with that. Shiplap, I'm kind of, you know, everybody and their mother when they first came to me wanted shiplap everything. So I would do it in small doses because I'm telling them it's going to go out as soon as it comes in and then your whole house is going to be shiplap. And that's not a knock at anybody who has it, but yeah. um, just it's to be very fun. trendy. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. yeah. How about for you, Jennifer? Ooh. Uh, you know, I happen to love a lot that's going on in design right now. I think there's some really beautiful expressions, both in traditional and contemporary design. Um, But I think that one thing I don't want to see going forward is a minimalism that feels cold. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we are now in an environment where we're trying to keep things very clean. And I understand that. And that's going to be important. But uh, we, nobody at this point is going to want to feel like they're living in a hermetically sealed box because we actually are living in hermetically sealed boxes right now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So I'm hoping that I don't see the, you know, the stark white box with no evidence of human existence in it. Um, I was the, I was lucky enough to be, um, design visionary 2020 at the international surface event this year. And I got to create these four worlds as I see them for the future of design. Mm -hmm. And one of them that I did was called spaceship Yulmo, which is sort of roughly translated the Chinese word for humor. And, um, the idea was that minimalism and contemporary futuristic design does not have to be cold. It can be exciting and fun with lots of play on light and color and organic shapes and technology, instead of working to isolate us, can actually work to unite us. And I promise that I was not psychic when I did this. Uh, <laughs> and I obviously did not know that the coronavirus, coronavirus pandemic was going to really isolate us all. But the theme actually works really well right now that we're using at this moment technology to connect us. And so what I want is to see any kind of minimalist, futuristic design 
have a sense of fun and play and not make us feel cold and alone, but make us feel connected and put a smile on our faces. That makes a lot of sense. Cause I remember, I think Samsung has a smart fridge where you can it's almost got a device within it where you could talk to people or you can use it much like FaceTime and so on. And I remember thinking, why would anybody like, are you in the kitchen that now I would love that. <laughs> right. <laughs> now I would love that. <laughs> or being able to like even watch Facebook watch on my TV. Yeah. And I my mean, most fridge. of us like, are yeah. talking to our refrigerators right now anyway. Oh yeah. Uh, so maybe we actually need to be able to do that and have a good excuse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks again for stopping by and being part of the e-spot. I cannot thank you guys enough. I really appreciate you taking the time out. You're Absolutely. Busy schedules because I know there's so much that you have to do now that you're working at home and living. Well, you always lived at home, but having to carry all those hats in one place. So I well, really appreciate it. Ladies, it was great chatting with you both. You too, both of you. Thank you so much for having us on. Is too. there anywhere people need to follow you, social media handles, anything you would like for them to follow to keep up with you as well? You want to mention Talia? Um, I'm at Talia Corinne Interiors on Instagram and Talia Maddock on Facebook. And we will be launching our new show with um, Angie Everhart and Cher, um, Char Jackson. It's a Let's Talk Women's Health. We've got some really neat guests lined up and experts. So follow us there so you can be a part of the conversation. Oh, you definitely got to send me the tag for that so I can yes. post it. Oh, yeah, I will. Awesome. And how about for you, Jennifer? Uh, sure. Follow me on Instagram and on Facebook at Jennifer Farrell Designs and then on Twitter at J Farrell Designs. And if you want to watch some really fun rerun marathons yes. of encore presentations, you can check me out on AWE. That's the Wealth Network. So on a wealth of entertainment, check me out there on uh, Find Me a Vacation Home and on Behind the Gates. And then on FYI, you can see yet another Jennifer Farrell marathon <laughs> with my show Holiday Dream Home. See, now, do you, how, did they like let you know that it was or just from the fan mail you found out? No, that they were I doing... keep getting fan mail okay. where people are taking screenshots and posting them oh, and saying, sweet. I've just watched 12 episodes of you today. Oh, that's, that's, so that's sweet. Because yeah. really yes. the only way I know that my shows have re, um, re-aired is the residual checks I get. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh, my God. God. Oh, did you know Camille was in Dawson's Creek? And I'm like, yes, I did know that. <laughs> Well, the check's only like 20 bucks by now, but so, yeah, fun times. <laughs> All right. Well, what we can get right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Goes towards my glow skin fund. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, ladies. And you guys have a great rest of your week. And I hope you can tune in for the rest of the week with more High Point Furniture Market Stars. Yay. Thanks, ladies. Stay safe Thank out there. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. All right, awkward time where I am saying bye to them while clicking this off. I'll have to learn about trick about making sure I'm always looking into the camera because I definitely look once that my guests are off, but when they're on, I want to make eye contact with them so I can actually be engaging and not be just in producer mode where I'm looking at comments and checking things like too many things. If I'm not engaged sometimes, um, yeah, it's just background noise but I'm gonna work on that. So all of us, let that be a key of something we all try to work on this week with any of our um, upcoming Zooms or webinars that we look at the green dot. Well, it's a green dot on my computer. I don't know what color it might be on your side, but all this time it's been right there trying to give me a hint to look here. So, so many great tips today with Jennifer Farrell and Talia Maddock. Can't wait for tomorrow. We have the queen of bling, Donna Moss will be joining us and she's gonna be bringing in a special guest to even give us more details about some great shows coming our way for home design, which I cannot wait to cannot wait to hear and share with you guys. And then Friday we have the Cohen brothers, um, Dave and Sam Cohen. They used to be of um, oh gosh, elegant mosaics, but now they're unique designs systems. I think I'm saying all the letters right. U D S. Yes. So. Again, thank you so much for joining me this week for home design, or not home design, excuse me, High Point Furniture Market Week virtual. All right, we'll see you again tomorrow, 6 o'clock. Don't be late. Yeah, you did. And she loved me when I'm in it. And she never be pretending. Nothing is friend. She gonna tell you what she bought.